All right, hey there everybody, welcome to this video. Hopefully we've got a good one here for you today. If you have an external trash can like this in your kitchen, really anywhere in your home and you're not a big fan of it just kind of sitting out without you know, a place to live, maybe it's like in this awkward space, um, hopefully this video can help you out. We're gonna be taking a trash can, basically building in something like this see the stainless steel little flip lid not unlike you would see you know in like a bathroom in a commercial building or a business or something but we're going to be using it as our primary trash can now obviously i'm going to switch out the bucket to something a little nicer but um you can see how the trash can itself will conceal nicely within and we're going to go ahead and get started so this video this project is a pretty cool project one of the coolest ones i think i've done in a while i think it just is really unique so um this is kind of what we were dealing with i bought a couple of um cabinets at at the local hardware store painted them up and i have a separate video on how to do that if you want to search for under my channel for mudroom upgrade you can kind of see how i did that but this full this little um flap the stainless steel flap i bought online i'll put a link down below i think it costs somewhere around 20 or 25 bucks for that piece now i have a template here that i cut out and basically what I'm doing first is before I commit to cutting into my countertop, which by the way is wood, if you have granite or, or quartz, this video probably won't help you unless you know how to cut a hole in granite or quartz and that exceeds my skill set. So luckily I have a wood countertop and um, I'm basically just testing this idea out here. I happen to find a basket that happens to be the pretty close to the diameter and we kind of spent a week throwing away garbage before we committed to this. And so this is kind of what the the, the test looked like. And once we were happy with that and we said, yes, this is what we want to do, it was time to kind of drill in to the countertop. And so before we do that, obviously you need to measure three times and cut once, right? And so that's what I'm doing right here, just trying to measure it, getting it centered from the wall to the edge and from the left to the right. And I'm marking that with blue tape. You can see there the edge of the blue tape marks the external diameter of the trash little flip I don't know what you want to call it and um, so here's what we're gonna do next after that exterior diameter is marked we're gonna be measuring the diameter of the hole that we're gonna be cutting okay so we're gonna be doing about a half an inch from each side all the way around now if you check out that link below you can see the actual measurements of this thing um, basically it's somewhere in the vicinity of an external diameter of eight inches. So I'm actually doing like a seven and a quarter diameter cut. Okay. So uh, to do so, I need to find the center point. And so, and by the way, I'm going to be drilling through two layers of wood because not only the countertop, but I've got the top of the cabinet that I need to drill through too. So we'll get to that all in due time. But first things first, the center point. So if you can't draw directly on your countertop, it helps to put a piece of tape down and you can do a pencil mark right on top of that tape. As long as that tape stays there, your measurements will be fine. So I'm just going to locate the center by measuring very precisely about seven and a quarter inches is the diameter of my cut. So divided by two is the center point, and then I'll take this wonderful little tool that I haven't touched, oh, since grade school, I wanna say, and I'll be using that to draw the perfect circle um, with the diameter that I want. So there's another look, I'm just you know getting out some tape and making some marks. That right there, that line, the edge of that tape is the outside diameter, like I said. So I'm just marking the diameter for the cut minus about a half an inch or so on each side. There we go, that's the pencil line. That's the other pencil line. So again, it's about eight inches. So my cut diameter will be about seven and a quarter or something like that. I've got a little bit of room for error because on the underside, on the under, on the underside of that trash can lid, um, it's got about a, I don't know, a quarter to a half an inch, about a half an inch of play. So I, I do have some room for mistakes. That flange will cover up. Once I seat it on the countertop, it'll cover up any mistakes that I have. Um, I just can't go outside a certain, that, that, um, that outermost piece of tape that you see there. If I do, then I know that when I put the lid down, um, there will be blemishes seen, and I don't want that. Okay, so... 
what I'm doing here, again, making that perfect uh, measurement for the cut that I'm gonna make. And I've got a sealed wood surface. By the way, you could make a template too if you have you know, a piece of cardboard you could do, but I preferred this. I found it to be much more precise. And if you are having a hard time drawing, if you have a dark countertop like this, um, the pencil is not picking up um, because you basically need to see this line really well, right? If you get out your your uh, saw and you start cutting. So I'm going to take some white paint and I'm just going to very lightly mark that. And that's going to help me see really, really well when it comes time to, to cut this, okay? Now, it is time to cut. I've got my measurements perfect. And to do so, I'm going to start with a drill bit. The drill bit just has to be wide enough um, or or kind of bigger than your uh, blade that you're going to be cutting with, okay? I happen to have a three-quarter inch, it looks like, drill bit. So we're going to just start right in the center. Again, you can really start anywhere because all this is going to be cut out. But we're going to start right on center here and go ahead and drill that all the way through. If you're just dealing with one layer of countertop, lucky you, I've got two layers of countertop one countertop and then the top of the, um, you can see kind of down there, there's another layer to penetrate the top of the cabinet. Um, I had that built up just a little bit so there's a gap in between the two, but not too bad. Oh, let me pop that out of there. Okay, so you're going to want to start with a, a hole that's basically big enough to put a your saw blade through, okay? Could be anywhere there. And now you're gonna take your jigsaw, this is my preferred tool here, and you'll go ahead and just make a series of straight cuts from the center hole all the way to the outer edge to that white uh, paint line that you drew. Do not exceed that paint line. If you do a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, there's a little bit of play that you have, a little bit of room for error, but this is basically the concept. You're gonna make a pizza pie shape. And, um, as much as your jigsaw will allow and hopefully you can get that all in one cut or one pass and you'll just do several of them and then depending on your angle here and depending on your jigsaw you might need to drill another kind of pilot hole there so you can see i'm doing that do not drill that hole past or beyond the white line but do several of those at the ends and that's just going to kind of allow you to get your um your jigsaw blade to start kind of right there can you see that how i just popped it through that hole now i'm going to flip my jigsaw setting to um not the not the straight cut but the the wiggly cut it allows the the blade to move a little bit have a little bit more play as you turn and you're going to hug those corners tight of course it's going to naturally want to go straight you need to really keep the pressure on um, to to stay true to your white line that you drew and then basically you're going to pop those all those pizza wedges out um, once you have them all cut there it is now as i mentioned i have to i have to cut the top of the there was a little bit of space so my blade wasn't long enough so i kind of did an upside down cut with my jigsaw and kind of, you can see here, several passes, uh, the reverse pizza pie, and then I also had this extra little saw to get some of the harder angles. And my hole there is not perfect at all, and I don't really care because all that that's not going to be seen whatsoever. But you can see I've got a pretty ugly gap in between there. So what I'm going to do after I sand up the edges just a little bit, get rid of some of that jagged stuff. And again, I don't care how, you know, you can see plenty of I didn't exceed. I didn't go outside of that white line. That was that was most important. But uh, everything else is kind of ugly. So we're going to start to um, kind of cover this up. Now you could seal this immediately um, if you do have trash that's going to kind of get um, kind of touch this as it goes through. You could take some wood sealant and uh, some polyurethane and just kind of seal that edge. You could also use some black duct tape. Um, be careful, though, if whatever you wrap underneath there is going to be vis visible from the underside if you open the cabinet. I don't really care too much about that, um, but I am just for aesthetic purposes going to stain the uh, open kind of wood pine there just to hide some of that color, make it look a little more finished because I do want to be able to remove everything that I install today 
for cleaning purposes. So um, we're gonna be building a little chute next from scratch. Now I picked this up at like the dollar store. Um, it's just a little dollar placemat, little clear placemat or a cutting board. Um, actually it's a cutting board, it has cut marks in it and it's gonna work like this. I'm gonna cut it in half, it needs about three or four inches in uh, kind of width and I'm gonna spray paint those. Now if you're feeling pretty, you know, pretty, uh, if you're not super conservative, you're feeling a little peppy and you want to go with a brighter color, you could certainly do that. But keep in mind um, that through the crack or through the through the little spaces in your stainless steel lid, you're going to be able to see that color. That could be a good thing or not. So, But it's basically going to kind of look something like this. Um, and We tried that and we're like, ah, we weren't looking for something so bold. So we went with kind of a metallic kind of neutral metallic. Um, again, this is not going to be a super visible part of uh, this project, but what I'm going to do is cut those in half, spray paint them, and then I'm going to take some super glue and I will kind of lay it out like this. Let that dry nice and well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to make those lines as straight as possible like that. And I did two layers of glue for extra um, support. Okay, next we're gonna take some roofing nails, or really any nails, because I want that chute, that plastic chute that I just made to be removable. So what I'm gonna do is drill some pilot holes, four of them, and I want these roofing nails, just like that, to fit in flush all the way, and I can easily remove them. They're a little tight though, meaning they're not super wiggly, right? They'll stay there, and if I wanna pull them out, I can. And um, so what I'm gonna do is take that little chute here, and just kind of fold that around. And I'm gonna press it all the way up against the rim or the edge there and I'll put that roofing nail right through there into the hole and seat it properly. And I don't want there to be too much lag or, or I don't want it, I want it to be tight but I want it to kind of wrap around the, the perimeter as much as possible. Um, if, it, if it's not all the way against the edge you might not be able to get your lid on like this okay so that's kind of what it's going to look like once you get things dry fit in there and you could at this point seal this up really well but i want to be able to remove it to clean it because it's a trash can and this will be our primary trash can so i imagine it'll get kind of crummy after a while again all the juicy big stuff we can open the door and put the trash in through there um, you could go with a taller trash can take off that lid for example and pop it right under there so it doesn't have so far to fall so to speak but again we want the big things to be accessible and reachable by opening the door and not having to pull out the trash can to do so so this is kind of our system and that's really it um, we did not see, um, glue it in again we wanted to be able to clean it and let's I'm just testing it out here you can see uh, plenty of things can just kind of you know fall through oh let me get that in focus for you there you go, falls through the little chute, and there's no way it's it's gonna go off to the side or anything like that. Um, here is what the, the cleaning process looks like. It cleans up really well, we've noticed, with some uh, just some basic glass cleaner. Look at that. And again, over time, if it builds up, we can just take the thing out and um, clean it, throw it in the dishwasher and whatnot. And same with those little plastic chutes. Those, those roofing nails can be kind of slid out and you can take that piece out and clean it if need be. But look at that. I think it's a nice, clean, polished look and a really easy job. Um, it took me kind of, you know, a few hours or so um, to do and it should take you less if you don't have that shoot to build so that's it Hopefully this video has been helpful for more do-it-yourself videos and product recommendation video reviews. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for being with me